What's up? This is Rebel Radio. What up? What up? This is DJ Newmark. This is Peanut Butter Wolf. It's your boy. It's okay. Keep checking out Rebel Radio. Rebel Radio. This is Rebel Radio. We're in the place right here. Uh, Rebel Radio is going down. What do you say? Rebel Radio? Oh, wait. Let's do it again. Rebel Radio. What's up, Rebels? Welcome back to Rebel Radio, the weekly show where I bring you the rebels who are shaping our culture. I'm your host, Josh Levine. This week, we bring you our returning champion, Eddie Donaldson. Uh, if you listen to this show, you've heard Eddie co-host with me several times. And if you're new to the show, then welcome. Eddie is the founder of Gorilla One, which is, I would call, a street art consultancy. He's a big part of the reason that street art has the massive cultural impact that it does. He works with a, a number of artists uh, to help them with um, selling art, selling to corporations, etc. He works with corporate clients, making all of those cultural connections. Uh, and he's an old friend of mine, so I'm excited to have him. He's also the curator of the Love Los Angeles online art show coming up uh, soon. You're going to want to follow sugarpressart.com to find out more about that. Uh, features a lot of the artists that we've had on this show and, and many that we haven't. Um, Tristan Eaton, Saber, Taz, Risk, Esteban Oriol, Dave Navarro, a.k.a. Life After Death, and many, many others. Uh, lots of great prints that I'm sure you're going to want to add to your collection. Check out sugarpressart.com for more info on that. In our interview, we talk a little bit about what's happening with street art during the pandemic. You know, some of the artists who are stepping up their game, raising the bar, et cetera, et cetera. But let's get into the interview with Eddie Donaldson right now. Well, dude, this is nice, man. I appreciate you coming out, out all the way out west here. Thanks for having me. Uh, no, it's nice to do this. I've been doing this over Zoom, which is not fun. Yeah, Zoom's it's rough. Hard. But, you know, in some ways, like, this is, we're, we're kind of built for this. Yeah. Right? Like, we, we've been working in or without offices forever. Even when you have office, half your business gets done not in somewhere the office, else, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we've been just, I think, flexible and mobile is like the whole name of the game. I Which think for us, the office is for other people to do the work, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. at least for me. I mean, I just have to have a space so other people can work and sure. I can come in and make sure it's getting done and then I'm on the road or in my car. Yeah. I mean, most of my most valuable conversations happen in my, in my car. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I think there's value in having a place for people to congregate, right? When Whenever that needs to happen. Yeah. But we're not, you know, I think like corporate America is not there you know they're having a much harder time Adjusting. adapting right yeah. like and you know there's loneliness there's depression there's confusion there's you know how do i stay focused how do, like that's the stuff we've been dealing with our whole yeah, lives the whole career yeah for sure so you know in some ways it's it's a it's a blessing to have that uh to have that background well you know one thing i think it does for like just me and using me and you as an example last time we went to a major studio right Mm. I'm all intimidated walking in. I'm seeing all these tchotchkes and these big, you know, movie posters. And it's like you get there and all of a sudden it's like you're looking up. Right. right. Sure. Now, like you said on the call, I think you said that um, it, it levels the playing field a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, everybody's at home with their kids and their dogs right. running through and all that. It, it's good. You know, I'm like we should uh, we should emerge into a better world after all this. Yeah. Who know, not without some, some bruises. Yeah. Uh, and when I say we, you know, some more than others. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of the technology aspect of everything. I'll be honest with you. The for convenience sure. factor. You know, it's like I, I, I think it's going to make everybody have to think a little bit more. Yeah. Because the playing field's a little more level, you know, and it might give them a little more respect for people who have been as gritty as we have been as long as we have. Sure. You know. At the same time, you know, the flip side of that, right? And you make your living or part of it in, in street art, uh, which by definition needs people out in the street yeah. to see it. Well, um, that part, yeah, that part. <laughs> and like, you know, we, you know, we've both, we've, we've worked in events and, you know, clubs and festivals and a lot of, you know, a lot of the stuff that we're used to is not happening right now. Well, ironically enough, Josh, 
Um, I'm getting a little bit more money per impressions on some of the things that we're doing. Okay. Yep. And there's Speak a lot more that. real estate than there used to be because there's a whole lot of boarded up buildings and, you know, you'd be yeah. surprised that how the dynamic is, you know, like I'm getting a couple dollars more per poster and stencils right now and there's a lot more space, you know, and if you yeah. look at people lining up outside Prince Street Pizza on Sunset, you know, any given night at six o'clock, there's 20 people standing out there waiting to get some pizza. Sure. And that's my new audience now is, nice. you know, those guys, you know, like or Erwan, you know, Erwan's banging constantly. Yeah. Now a stencil outside Erwan's worth a little bit more than it used to be because mm. there was so much going on. And now there's so less going on that those target spots a little bit more key. Makes perfect sense. Um, so what's. So what is the business? What are, you, what are you working on these days? I mean, selling art primarily. Okay. Which slowed down a lot in the last three months. I guess everybody's e, uh, EDD money ran out. So was pe were people buying art Oh, yeah, last the beginning year? of the pandemic, I, really? it was bananas. Really? That, that's the only way I was able to, to, to stay, sustain. Was so people, you know, staying home, they're fixing up their houses. Fixing up their houses. They're getting their EDDs or some of these... People who are working at these major studios are not home a lot, so they're right. kind of complete. They're they're okay with not finishing the project, and sure. you spending more. You spending ten hours a day in your living room on a, on on Zoom. You're like, wait, I want to put something on that spot. You right. Know? So I did really well, and then nice. it kind of slowed down. Um, but it's picking back up. I got a print release coming out on the seventh with the Love Los Angeles style show, and I, I kind of I took the time to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to level up a little bit when it comes to the game now, you know, and before it's like I'm playing 10 games. So I'm like, whoever can get involved in that game is cool because we're going to win anyway. We're just not going to win by 20. Right. Mm -hmm. Bad analogy, maybe a good one. Now I'm like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it right. So okay. I got Tristan Eaton. I got Saber. Shout out to Tristan for getting me to turn the game up a notch because he definitely was like, nah, that's not going to work during these times. You know, what do you, so what do you say? I was just, he's like, so who else is in the drop? And I was like, I don't know, whoever I'd calls me today, you know, it's kind of like, I don't, that's how I curate, you know, because yeah. all my friends are, you know, or most of my friends are on that level. And he was like, nah, maybe you should use this time to really turn mm. it up a notch. So I got Saber, Tristan, Risky, Taz, David Flores, um, Esteban. Esteban Oriol, which was a big one for me because mm -hmm. we're doing his book cover for This Is Los Angeles. Nice. And I got Amanda Lynn, who's been a part of the crew forever, and uh, Cess from New York. Oh, okay. And I mean, it's, you know, I probably wouldn't have done that if Tristan hadn't gave me that, like, call me when you got the list together and we'll talk about it, you know? Yeah. Um, and then there's the show, which has 20 people in it, like Navarro's in it, uh, with dual diagnosis and with life after death. Luke Westman, a bunch of good people. But, you know, I'm taking this time when it comes to these things to really turn it up a notch because I have the time. I can kind of focus. Sure. So how does how does the drop work? Is it all? On the 7th, we're dropping prints by each artist. All online? All online. Okay. We're going to do, I'm doing, I am doing a pop-up with Estevan at Diamond Supply on the oh, 13th. Cool. Okay. When we'll do some limited merchandise, you know, collaborative merchandise available. He's going to sell some, sell and sign some books. And then we're going to hold some prints for that date so that people, if you buy it online, you can pick it up that day. Mm -hmm. Or you can buy a few available there and kind of either get them personalized or take your photo with Esteban. And what is the, uh, <clears throat> obviously art's something that is easy to buy online. But if I had a guess, I think most art, people still go to art shows. And they want to see it. I don't think it's easy to sell art online. I really don't. I think the prints are one thing because it's not, you know, it's not as detailed sure. or as technical per se. Um, there's not as many layers involved. It's kind of, a, you know, but I, I don't, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of selling online. I'd love to get back to a place where we can show in person, you know, cause, cause, well, there's two, there's two pieces, right? There's one, you're only going to spend so much on something you haven't seen, which means someone like me who's earning commission is only going to earn so much commission. Right. Um, and I like the way people's faces light up when they go, I love this piece and they stand there for 20 minutes and then they cop it, you know, yeah. there's, that's kind of like a win. Sure. You get paid, but the win is like when somebody falls in love with something on the wall and they're like, can I take it home tonight? You're like, no, you can't. They're like, please no, you know, because they want it so bad versus it being kind of like a, a, 
a, a, a line item or, or a bucket list piece, you know, oh, a print from Esteban. I, I need one. You know, it's a little different when it's sure. in person. Yeah. And I think there's the, um, you know, there's a reason that the bar is usually open. Yeah. There's uh there's that communal, you know, I, I, I think like, I mean, I, I've definitely bought art at shows that I wasn't planning when I, I wasn't going there to spend money. Why did you? Because I think you get swept up in it and you, you know, you see other people enjoying it you know you you're you feel like you're part of a community can i tell you a secret it's true true story Please. i've only bought two pieces of art at art shows and okay. i've been in this business for 25 years and both were exactly that i got swept up and caught up in the moment i bought a piece yeah. from norm on fairfax when he first opened the studio before it was known gallery because i was just so happy that he had it and i, I saw how happy he was and it was uh -huh. like I wanted to be one of the first people to actually kind of kick in, you know? And yeah. then I bought this piece. I can't even remember the kid's name, but it was this heavy metal rocker dude with a mohawk, like this little character. He actually has a show on Cartoon Network now. And it was, ba I bought it because of heavy grass. I was like, when we blow up, I'm going to put this in the office. <laughs> We're still waiting to blow up, but. Um, but you got the piece. I got the piece. So when we do, and if we ever have an office that people I can come to, I'm going to make sure we put it in there. But speaking of heavy grass, we are we are on the way back. We're coming out with the collaboration with Clown from Slipknot. Nice. I mean, I hope so. You know, me and you both know that those things don't always pan out to be what they're supposed to. Um, but you know, I'm excited. I think Slipknot has a pretty solid following. What do you, What do you think is the um, is there is there a formula? Is there a secret to to these collaborations that makes them work versus the ones that don't? Yeah, you got to really be about that life, mm. you know, like you look at Burner and Snoop Dogg just dropped some shit. And the first words out of Snoop's mouth was like, yo, when you get this, we put our paws all over it. We give it to our friends. It's like real, you know, because yeah. that's what he's doing. He's probably blazing right now. You sure. feel me? Sure. But so if you're just trying to like capitalize off the name of your band which I'm not naming any names, but we both have been involved in a lot of situations where you could be the biggest band in the world, but if it's not, you're not about that life, your consumer doesn't necessarily, sure, a portion of your, your audience is, but if you're about that life, it'll work for you. Be Real probably can't go wrong. You know, Burner can't go wrong. Snoop can't go wrong. But so, um, who of the artists that you you're watching that you work with that you you know have your eye on who's like using this time to step up tristan eden risky's doing pretty well right now yeah. like there's just no stopping them and is that just creating more is it I mean, like I what what, if, what are they doing well, I mean, Tristan's just making a lot of the right moves mm -hmm. and aligning himself with a lot of right, the right people, you know, which is kind of what he told me to do with my thing. I think Kelly just has the means and the facility to create more work, which has him becoming a little bit more creative because as you make more work, you have to do di you have to do things a little bit differently sure. every time or, you know, you kind of got to branch off into different areas. But Kelly's doing really, really well. You know, he's put a great team together. And he's just constantly working. Like, it's a factory there now. Mm. You know, it's just like, um, you know, and that's probably. And that's, um, that's not commissions, right? That's like. Well, it's commissions and it's just work to make it and send okay. it out. But he's got a lot of hotels and a lot of different commercial places around across the country that are asking him to either come and do murals or create murals, you know, create work specifically for them. Nice. There's a guy named Garen Swing that's doing a lot right now. Um who you might have known back in the day, but oh, he was no. part of House of Pain in the beginning. Okay. Lived with Danny. He's a, he was an interior decorator and like a faux finisher for a while. And then I, when I had my gallery in Melrose, I was like, yo, come do a stencil. And he came and did a, he, he did the opium den. He designed the opium den mm -hmm. and a bunch of other bars that you would know. Mm -hmm. But he had a Ganesh stencil and I had a spiritual gallery. So I'm like, come put a Ganesh on the sidewalk. Next thing you know, now he's making art and he's doing he's doing really well with it. You know, he's got Ian Schrager hiring him to do a bunch of really cool installations uh, globally, actually. Um, so he's taking advantage of it. I think anyone that's able to take this time and just focus that I know is really being able to get at it. Saber's doing a lot of great things right now. The seventh letter is is, you know, Casey has been able to take this time and create a couple different outlets like pins and needles 
um, which we have a pen dropping with this month as well. Mm. If you don't know what it is, it's basically he makes lapel pins with everybody from MQ to GK to me and Jim. Nice. And, you know, they're easy turnkey things that you can buy for $25 and sells them all out, you know, and air fresheners and like just low budget stuff for the, Mm -hmm. for the everyday guy, you know, like Mm -hmm. Justin one day will be like, dad, I want this pen. It's cool. And you'll grab it because it's, it's not a huge investment, but it's a definitely a piece of the core culture. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's working on some things out in the desert that are going to be pretty good in Joshua tree. So I think a lot of people I know are, are taking this time to level up, you mm-hmm. know, because once we get out of this, you got to be ready to go. And you For can't sure. be doing what you were doing when we went into it. Because right. everybody's mindset is going to be a little bit different, I think. Are you seeing, um, obviously, a lot, of the, a, lot of the, a lot of this world relies on brands to hire artists or commission work or, you know, commercial projects? Is that um, is that happening? Do you see brands that are spending on art right now? I'm not now? seeing the brands. I mean, I'm doing that thing with Diamond Supply with Estevan. Yeah. And they just did something with Big Sleeps. But I'm not, I think the, if you ask me, and I don't know this to be true, but it's my opinion and what I see, the brand and artist relationship has kind of changed since we were doing it. Mm-hmm. Sure, BMW's working with Mar, you know, and Lamborghini just did something with Skylar Gray. Skylar, yeah, yep. Skylar Gray. So there's a little bit of that stuff going on, but I think, I think since everything's tightening up, everyone's going a little more towards what they can trust and what's a little more traditional versus branching out. I think the idea on the, on the brand side, yeah, yeah, I think the idea of doing things are still there, but the actual execution is kind of a little bit in limbo because, you know, they're tightening up budgets and there's there's less events happening because what we do when right. we do stuff for brands, there's a lot of events. Sure aspects to it like with scion it was like the tours and it wasn't you can't paint the car and just put it on the internet you know is it worth paying david cho to make a two hundred thousand dollar car to just have on the internet you want to drive it down the beach right Mm -hmm. so on the brand side it slowed down a little bit how but on the property side you know when it comes to commercial whether it be condo developments or it's a hotel or it's a restaurant there's a lot of that going on you know there's a lot and there's two sides to it there's the high-end side where they're paying kelly or risky or someone really good a lot of money to do it and or there's the lower end side where there's somebody that can just get the job done mm-hmm. you know like a noodles mm-hmm. for, at the house you know it's like it looks great to me you know didn't have to pay risky a bunch of money to come paint right. the patio yeah. but you got the same effect so i'm Especially noticing because when we move we can't take these brick walls with us well we could <laughs> but, but i don't know if noodles is worth it um but i mean just even when i pulled up here the butterflies outside i mean yeah. that's, that's risky did the place uh like two blocks over really yeah see what i mean so i think art in general has become more a a, you know a stronger piece of our everyday life and i think people are starting to recognize and respect the 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 feeling it gives people and 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 kind of what what it's worth so i'm seeing a lot more of that going on like i got a couple projects in santa monica big development guy wants me to come in and look at some things Mm. So I'm excited about that. But on the brand side, I think it's slowed down. I think brands need to get at us, though. You know, if you're a brand I mean, and you're listening. It's interesting. is like what you were saying at the beginning. Like, because there's less clutter, there's less happening out there, right? If a, if a brand, you know, if a car company showed up at the, at the diamond thing, uh, they make a big splash, right? They, they would have a, they would capture more of people's attention than they would have, you know, two years ago because there's 50 things. Yeah, because Fairfax day. is banging. Yeah, right. And, you know, that's I mean, the brands that I talk to, you know, there's a lot of still just let's sit on our hands. Let's hold our budgets. Let's just wait. Yeah, wait it um, out. Wait it out, which I, I've said from day one, that's a mistake. Right. Because when you're waiting, somebody else is not waiting. Yeah. Um, although I, I haven't really seen the brands too much who aren't waiting um but you know i think uh you know this is when there's opportunity for for you heard of life water yeah so life water just did a big thing with trav Mm -hmm. where he designed bottles and then kelly risky's obviously doing the stuff with monster where you know nationally you can go into a convenience store or a gas station and buy a risky you know, oh, can. Cool. but what's, nice. what's crazy is I went to one of my boys house here 
and he had the can. I'm like, yo, you got a risky can. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, that's risky. It had butterflies. Right. He didn't even know what it they was because it's not being touted at sure. the store. It's just a can yeah, on I mean, the shelf. I, I think it's like, you know, I remember people, when, when, when I first started Rebel, I remember people used to tell me like, oh, you know, uh, you know, uh, every every brand is like, you know, every brand is, is using Moby in their commercials and, you know, electronic music is like going to be that, you know, the thing. And I was like, you know, they, nobody knows that it's Moby. Yeah. Right. Like, no, I mean, Moby's maybe a bad example. Yeah, we know, had, but not everybody knows. Right. But like the work, they're not. My point is like brands are not coming to this culture because of the stars. They're coming to it because they like the sound. It fits their yeah where they're going the vibe of their of of their thing right but they're not like investing in the culture in the way that that suggests and i think it's the same thing is like we need some something that looks spray painted on the can to put on a 200 million cans yeah 199 million plus of those people that buy them are not going to know not who gonna it know. is. Yeah, not Monster care. is Monster is investing a lot into Kelly and to what Kelly's doing. They should. Because right? they have a great relationship, but that doesn't translate to the end buyer, though. Well, you In know, Kentucky, it, if you're buying that in a gas station, you have no clue who it is. But my point has always been that it, that they're missing the... They're, they're, they're only getting the tip of the iceberg, right? That if the, can, if the spray art gets you to pick up the can that's great that's done its job but then there's there's an opportunity to bring people into this rich story yeah right that to make them care a lot more because the thing is you know sure they picked up the graffiti looking can today tomorrow it's going to be football season yeah. and they're going to want a football well speaking of football kelly painted at super bowl so did tristan dope but once again i don't think it was as widely not known as it could have been well, like I think a, a good example is the is the NBA jerseys, right? And yeah. so you know we had uh, cartoon. cartoon, we had Hayes. Uh, was that it? No, there was a couple others. No, I can't remember. They just um, Mitchell and Ness just did a new series with musicians. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, the E forty in the Warriors jersey, and uh, you know, a bunch of I forget all the names, but um, you know, like that's it's cool like it's great that that's happening i think you know if you look at the Hayes one or the cartoon one it's like it's easy to just see like that looks you know more relevant yeah right and but the opportunity is for them to convert some of those fans into people that are really following the story and learn about cartoon and what he's yeah and the done culture. It, not just him but like yeah the, the culture. culture yeah right because that's what makes those visuals relevant. Well, speaking of that, when we do the thing at uh, Diamond Supply, we got a bunch of lowriders coming and motorcycles. Like, we're going to give Fairfax a slice of what, like, this is Los Angeles looks like, you know? So if and kids don't know, they will after the 13th. And Nick's pretty excited about that. He's like, I want to bring L.A. to Fairfax. I'm like, all right. Nice. So February 13th. February 13th. 12 to 4 on Fairfax at Diamond Supply Co. Okay. And for people that's not in LA, they can get it online? Go online or at Diamond Supply Co. website and there'll be some stuff available or you can get the prints at sugarpressart.com but they'll probably go quick so don't hesitate. They drop, I mean seriously we're only doing 25 of them. Right. But we have three different ones. We have big, we have a 30 by 40 24 by 36 and an 18 by 24 but it's 25, 10 and 5. Nice. So they'll probably go fast. Um, eBay, you can get those on eBay if you're not here. Yeah, how much is that? Is how much are you thinking about the resale market? I think for Esteban, it'll be big because he doesn't do a lot of this. Mm-hmm. I think for Tristan, he doesn't do a lot, so it'll be big for him. I think for some of the rest of them, probably not so much. But I mean, I definitely we 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 brought the numbers down so that they would be hot after the fact. You know, mm-hmm. because that's where you build up for people like me and you. That's where the that's the that's that's the payoff. You sure. Know? The money's little in the beginning. But if you can actually do something and then it's like highly traded or highly sought after on eBay, then people are like, oh, look what you did. You know, 
Yeah. It's easy to sell 25 prints, but it's hard to get five times the value a month later or right. two months later. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. I'm hopeful. But I think for Esteban, we'll be able to command that. We're only doing five 20 by 40s, 30 by 40s, you know. On the LA Fingers, they were they dropped at a thousand, and the last one he sold, I think, was like six grand. Nice. So that's six times the value in a year and a half. Yeah. And that's you huge. did a hundred of those, so imagine I'm only doing five. Wow. You know, I thought about putting it on eBay and buying it myself for like twenty grand, like two days later. You know, building the hype. I'm only kidding. I'm you only probably don't kidding. have to. I yeah, think, I I'm think only that'll kidding. happen. All right. Eddie, thanks for doing this, man. It's always fun having you on. I think you're our our most uh, repeated guest and always welcome, of course. I would never say no, and I can't wait to come back. Dope. But you know what, Josh? You suck. <laughs>